brothers and sisters, and Jesus is coming soon. Wow, all these signs are happening all around. Tensions in the Middle East, the tensions, the labor pains, increasing. I mean, think about this coronavirus that's going around. It's in, it's one of, we are living in the end times, the end times in the final days. We don't know when the Lord's coming, but we know the season that we're in. We know that he's coming soon. We see his signs, prophecies being filled every day, every second. Literally, pages of the Bible are flying off. And so many earthquakes in places like 7 point something, 7.1 7 earthquakes. Increase in pestilences, the coronavirus, a new... I mean, sometimes it's just hard to believe, but it's actually so true. If you open your eyes to God, sinners, if you open your eyes, you would understand. Not everything I'm saying, but understand. If you just look and see what God has done for you and that he's coming soon. And I'm not saying this to scare people. I'm saying this because there's still a chance for you. But time is running out and time is short. All you have to do, so easy, just accept Jesus with your heart and truly mean it. Don't just believe on in Him. Don't say, oh yeah, I believe in God. You have to come to a complete surrender of asking for forgiveness for your sins. And it's that easy. Believe it truly in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again. And you will be saved. For it says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I have to tell you, brothers, look up for our redemption draft night. For we, we're, we're watching for the return. Not just seeing of our eyes, but spiritually, our hearts, our souls, our spirits are literally like looking up to heaven. Like, come Lord Jesus. I mean... And if you need help to get saved, I, I'll help you. Dear Lord, if there's anyone that is not saved and they want to, and they need you, Lord, they do need you. And all they need to do is just surrender their life to you. I am sorry for all my sins I have done. Please forgive me. Come into my heart. I do believe that you died on the cross for me, for my sins. Please forgive me. Come into my life. Make me new, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you did this, you are part of God's forever family. The Lord's done so much for me. It's for you, for everyone. Rather, if you guys want to admit it or not. If you guys rather want to admit, say that there is no God, and you know there is a God, because... There's always, there's always God. He's always there and he will never leave us nor forsake us. God doesn't leave us. We leave him. And for John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through him. We have a hope. Our hope is Jesus. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Except by me. <clears throat> and we are to boldly share the gospel of grace. Make disciples. When I say make disciples, what do I mean? I mean, I mean, you can't make people turn to, turn to, turn to Jesus. But you could tell them. It's a choice. God's given us a choice. Tell them everything that God's done for you. And them. And that Jesus has done for them too. He died on the cross for your sins. If you can't believe that, I can't make you believe it. All I can say is, I'll pray for you. There is power through prayer. And some people, maybe they were Christians back then. And they just fall away because maybe they lost a really close family member because they said, oh, God took God took someone close to me. And, like, they can't accept him anymore. Well, 
God knows what he's doing. God is in charge. He knows everything. He knows everything that's doing. He plans everything. He knows what he is doing. Our plans do not matter. His plans do matter. He loves us so much. More than you can even imagine. More. And you can have so much more. If you just ask God, Lord, I want more from you. And he will give you those experiences. Christianity is not a religion. It's an experience of God. And only a born believer, and when I say born again, I mean has been saved. And when I mean saved, I mean has recepted Jesus into their heart. And has repented of their sin. I repent of my sins daily because I want to. And I think it's the right thing to do. And even though we, we get so depressed and down and stuff, what do you think whenever you're crying and you're so depressed, like because a loved one dies or something, and you just suddenly just feel happy for all no, no, no reason of a sudden? That is the Holy Spirit comforting you and telling you, and God telling you everything is going to be okay. And I'm not saying being a, being as the life of a Christian is it's not easy. Satan's always going to be there to try to try to tempt you to do stuff. But you have just have to say boldly and mean this. Satan, leave me alone in the name of Jesus. And he will flee. He will flee away. He's not like God. He knows his day is coming. He, know, he even knows that Jesus is coming. That's why he tells you that that's when someone, when someone tells you that Jesus is coming soon, and he tells you, oh, don't believe it. Because he knows that he, Jesus, is coming soon. He knows his day is coming, and he knows he's going to be thrown into the, what is it called? The pit of fire or something like that. He knows his day is coming. And his thing, his job, is to take as many people because the only way he can get to God is through us. To deceive many people. Bring them down. Make them, try to make them fall away from God. We are to rebuke the enemy. He's all around the world. The Mark of the Beast system, that's just... Uh, it's the Antichrist. The Antichrist, okay, the Antichrist is... When Satan, okay, the guy allows Satan to possess him, and he will create a mark of the beast, 666, six, six, and 666. Six. If you accept the mark, you're doomed. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not lying. I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I'm telling you, if you accept the mark, you're doomed. You're going to hell. Anyways, but I'm telling you, Jesus loves you, and you have time. But time is running out. You think I just make this stuff up? No. God tells me. He talks not just out loud, but he even talks visions, experiences, running and shouting. Have you ever wondered where you go to church and there'll be people running and shouting because they are praising the Lord, because they are so happy what the Lord's done for them. Or when they, when, and God, when we're at church, if you just have this feeling to like trying to draw you to the altar, go. Don't, don't just sit there and Ignore it. He is trying to call you to the altar. He is trying to make your life better. He is trying to make you a better person. Reset you in your life. Put you in a place where he wants you to be. To live for him. He doesn't call us his slaves, his servants. He calls us his children. When I say brothers and sisters, I mean brothers and sisters in Christ. Because we are all brothers and sisters. And to God we are children. We are, we are child of God. We are children of God. And nothing can take us out of his hands. Because we loved him. And we love him back. And he loves us. He doesn't love us more than one other. He loves us. I, you can't even explain how much God loves us. Because God is so much more like If we literally saw God right now. We would die because he is so glorious. His body is so glorious and beautiful that our eyes, our human eyes and body could not stand it. We would literally die. That's why he sent his son, Jesus, to die for our sins so that we would be in heaven with him. Hallelujah. 
And when I say, come Lord Jesus, I mean come Lord Jesus. Because this world's just going to get worse before things get better. Which is exciting times for the church. When I say the church, I don't mean just the church. I mean church as Christians. When you say like, also when Jesus comes. But t- take this like a husband and her bride. Jesus has come for his bride. The bride is a church. The church is the Christians. I'm talking about true believer Christians that believe in Jesus. I'm not talking about Christians that say, oh, uh, I'm a Christian. Those are lazy Christians. Lazy Christians are Christians that say they are Christians, but they don't live for Jesus. Like, they'll go to church Sunday and, like, maybe, like, do something, but the next day they just go out do whatever they want to that's sinful and do not even live for Jesus. That's going to get you nowhere. You are going to be stuck in, like, a circle until you accept Jesus. And you're going to find out one day that Jesus is the answer to life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And you're going to realize one day, when you get older, you're going to realize one day.